welcome to the Jim Fannin Show. Aaron Visitine in the booth today. In the studio. From the Viz Show. Welcome aboard. Hello, Jim. Thanks for having me. I'm not finished yet. Oh. <laughs> By all means, go. Stop talking over my intro. Hi. Hi. Yeah, there you are. There's a picture of my guest, Erin Visitine. And just so you know, here's her Twitter page. I know you saw it earlier. And the Viz Show on Fakebook. Go give it a like, give it a share, give it a follow, give it some love. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, how are you? Thanks for coming in. Oh, First, before we get started. Right. Okay. We had this conversation a little bit on the phone. But I appreciate you still being my friend. I've lost a lot of friends and family over some good friends and family. Not my best guys. Like a, I can use Scotty Clarkson as a guy, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, he's got his own takes. He's got his own opinions. We don't agree on a lot of things. I shouldn't say a lot of things, on some things, but it doesn't matter. And my good friends don't care what my politics are. They don't care what religion I worship. They don't care what color my skin tone is. They don't accuse me of having white privilege or being a narcissist or anything because they don't agree with my politics or something I said on my show or I use foul language. So you're one of those people in my life. I didn't Am really I? know for sure until we spoke recently. You haven't unfriended me from Facebook. You haven't said nasty no. things private on my dms and say you piece of garbage lots of people have so thank you for that um i appreciate that about you because you know our conversation said it all the other day when i asked you to be on the show and then i'm not a good texter i'm a caller so I, I pick up the phone so i call and it's yeah. you get me so much better than me tr yes. trying to convey my feelings through i can get misconstrued text, so easily so. via text thank you for that and thank you for your time for coming in today uh and thanks for having me on your show i think i was one of I don't know. Yeah, you one were on of the my first show guests. last year. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that was Feels fun. Feels like ages ago. Yeah. I like to be the why. guest. Yeah, I it was fun. I love to be the guest. I'm not the guest. I wish You're I could be the not. guest more often mm -hmm. because it's so much easier to be the guest than it is. Like I'm the the host and the producer and the engineer and everything here. And yesterday I had Jennifer Lynn in a, a local artist, musician. And instead of running this screen with the music in the background when I was doing the uh, intro, mm -hmm. I had uh, this screen up, which was muted. It had me in the corner and it was me talking to her and she's just sitting there and I'm saying, you know what, do, do, here we go. Like she she didn't know she was on camera. That oh, we're she didn't know? No, well, she didn't know that I'm I had really her live. I'm enjoying this the... Florida chair. <laughs> it's like I just sink back into it. I feel like a, I feel really little in it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Speaking yeah. of really little, tell yeah. me about your daughter who's five now and you were yeah. telling me that she's actually a like professional level Mario Kart or Mario, what's she playing? Oh yeah, she's obsessed Ivy. with Mario, Ivy. Yeah, she's going to be five um, January 2nd and um, she um, is so smart, these kids with their um, tablets now. Like we never grew up with anything like that. I think I got my first cell phone when I was like 21 and it was like the flip phone, <laughs> yeah. remember? Uh, and now she can, she's four, like almost five and she's like just going through the tablets and now she discovered video games, Mario. And so we have Wii, Wii U. It's like um, really easy, not really easy. It's actually tough to play. Like I can't play personally because I get frustrated when I die, and I'm like, I can't do this. Like, it's just, it's annoying. But she is so good. Like, she, I want, like, she could be in competitions for it. Really? Oh, yeah. And uh, now she's obsessed with Mario. I think it's like her first crush. Like, I remember my first crush when I was her age. It was um, Bob from Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to go up to the screen and kiss him and be like, I love Bob. And really? She's yeah, she's obsessed with Mario, so she's gonna be Mario for Halloween, actually. Wow. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. What's uh, Halloween look like this year for you? Um, you know, I don't know. I know that 
we're definitely working on something on Queen Street, actually, for the 31st of October. I think um, a bunch of members of the BIA and some all the businesses are coming together and they're creating this event for the day. I believe um, Charles and the Trainwreck are playing in the late evening. Love Chunk. So, yeah, and he's been actually on my show many times. Yeah. Um, Didn't they have their own show there for a while? Him and Stumble or something? Him and Steve Stumble did the punk show. Lord Stumble. Is it Lord Stumble now? Yeah, yeah, I refuse to call him anything but Lord Stumble, and I think everyone should. Um, (laughs) Originally, when I was going to do the Viz show, I was going to do all punk. But then Steve and Charles came together and I was like okay my hands are tied like you guys got me on that one like Steve knows a lot so does Charles they're very they love their music so um yeah but Charles has been great we've done some shows together um and we have a blast yeah Chunk seems pretty bitter that has he never is the <laughs> is he and the, I support yeah, him he, he, but he's, he's talking about like 13 years and never being acknowledged by the Niagara, Niagara Music, Music Awards. Award? Does that mean that he's never His won one or he's like That's never, it. never been nominated? That's how I read it. Never been even I don't acknowledged. I who runs the um, actual, I don't know who judges well, when we met, it was I you. I don't know it was you, around. but I mean, you were really well connected with them when, when we first met, the first time I oh, had yeah. you on the show at 610. Well, we did, I think the year I was there, the one year we did it at Taps when Dead Mouse came out was the best year. Was that 007? Uh, yes. Or was that the church, 007? Oh, wait, yes. It okay. was the church. The church You're was correct. good. Uh, seeing yes. uh, what's his name play uh, the trio uh, what's his name and then he did that he does that little snoop riff he, the guy that blows he's got the mouth uh, Brian Sorensen they oh. played at the church oh. and we were dancing in front of the stage oh yeah was I dancing yep oh yeah I, I probably... got some film oh, of yeah, you dancing we got some I, photos. I emceed that one that's the one where Cand- Candy's got me like this with my arms yes. out on the stage that I, You're I'm great. all in black. You are my favorite MC for the <laughs> NMAs, for sure. I had some yeah. fun with that. And then I did the Taps year too when Dead Mouse was there. You did. Uh, and that was a good year. Yeah. Right? And I was so Remember I he was pulled so up happy. with his car? Remember his no, car? It was parked out back, I think. Well, yeah, but it was out back and I was like, don't leave it there, man. It's yeah. In the back, this beautiful. And I thought it was so cool know. that he was just glued when CAC was performing. Was he? Oh yeah, he was just. Oh no he, way! Like he was, he looked like the biggest fan, and I'm a huge CAC fan too. Yeah. Did CAC have his uh, uh, going on the wagon party recently, or is that tonight or Friday? Maybe it's, it's Friday. Friday. He's at our bar, wherever that is. Oh, is he? He says time to get on the wagon for a while. Time to grow up. Ooh. And you know how hard CAC parties. He parties. And uh, so I was yeah. happy to see that he's going to have one last hurrah before he goes. Is that what it is? Wha- well, I don't know. He says he's drying out for a bit. I don't know if he's. Good for him. He yeah. should. I, well, I mean, I'm not going to tell him what to do, but, um, you know, if I, I support anybody who's going to try and better themselves. Yeah, yeah. and alcohol is a thief for sure. It Honestly, it's kind of gross. Have you backed away from it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just like I guess having the kid really recently would oh really yeah um I just find it just doesn't do any good. Well, you know? what's that song? Nothing good happens after two a.m. That's a new one that I've been listening to, but yeah. um, it I can't deal for the last maybe ten years. I shouldn't say I can't deal because I choose to deal. Right. The next day is murder for it's me murder. i hate my life and i don't yeah. suffer i've been pretty lucky i think anyways from having a pretty solid mental condition stability mm-hmm. i don't like i get down and especially in the winter i can feel the blues a little bit but i've been pretty lucky that way mm-hmm. but the next day after alcohol i You're just i'm like, oh my god yeah i'm i don't like it's yeah. the worst ever so i yeah I've gotten to a point where I just don't want to deal with the depression the, the next day. Like, yeah. it's not cool waking up and saying I hate my. There's so much guilt involved with the alcohol. It seems the um, next day. So I've been I've, trying to get away from I it as well. I think in a little city like Niagara, where everybody drinks, um, it's hard to. It's easy to to get into that lifestyle to do that. But um, in it's it becomes an event to be a drinker. It becomes a lifestyle. So it, it's. 
it overcomes your drive for a career. It overcomes your drive for anything, really, if you're drinking because you have to deal with the hangover and you're drinking with all the other people that are drinking and it's so easy to just keep doing it and feel cool and have confidence or whatever you feel. And it's fun, but after a while you realize, okay, yeah, uh, I'm almost 40 and... You know, it's just time to focus on other things and you can't do it if you're always drinking um, because drinking is drinking. It's that category. Um, so my advice to anybody who wants to focus on a career or anything um, that means something to them and has an issue with drinking, you know, just step aside and be patient with yourself. I think patience is a big thing, you know. Um, don't be so it's so easy to just drink right you can go to the liquor store and get bombed yeah I think it's like a matter crap. of putting it in perspective my little brother many years ago he uh, quit drinking or cut way back on it and yeah. his analogy to me and I, I still remember this he's like okay so let's say the day you're drinking the day that you're drinking is gone as far as working goes because you're right you're jerking around. You're not working. You're, you're not working. You're right. drinking. There's then, like two. And so the next day after the bender. Yeah. Because we don't just have, if, if we only had a couple, then that's not really drinking. You no. know, you have two the next day, you're good. But as I've gotten older, my, my hangovers have got ridiculously Hangover. long. <laughs> and like to the point where it's like not just the next day, it's two and three days that I'm still not normal. I'm still not sleeping right. I'm still not yeah. feeling my game. I'm still maybe depressed or, or feeling like, ah, fuck it, I can do it later. It's a depressant. You know? yeah. yeah. And so uh, he says, okay, so the day, the day that you're drinking is gone. So there's one. That's fine. Then the hangover, done. There's two days gone out of the week. And if you drink twice a week... There's four days out of the week that are gone, the day you're drinking and the day after. And the day after. And then four times 50 weeks is 200 days where you're useless. Useless, to, yeah. Like, you know, we've always been real estate agents. So yeah. those two, that's two-thirds of your life. Two-thirds. And then I have a, a buddy of mine, Terrence Davids, who's a, a real estate guy. We used to be partners many years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, he said, kind of similar to what I just said, but after he quit drinking, he was Mr. Available. Because yeah. no one called when he was drinking. He was like, I'll see you tomorrow. You yeah. call, I can see you right now. And oh, by the way, tomorrow I'm going to be hungover, so don't call me then either. So he's Mr. Available. Now he's, him and Sean DeLott, another recovering a addict mm -hmm. on alcohol and Mm -hmm. crack or whatever he was on they're killing it they're the number one real estate team in niagara right now Amazing. these two guys recovering yeah, so if you take that junkies for lack of a better into term drinking and put it into your work mm -hmm. you know and this is no secret i'm not speaking yeah. out of school these guys will, will tell you about it like i remember sean de coming into my office and and just he was all jumped up and probably I just left behind it. the furnace you know to make it into my office at remax in and he's sitting there and he goes yeah. oh i'm clean Oh, yeah, I've been clean for a while. And I'm looking at him going, oh, 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 are you trying to get mad? I've been high enough to know what it looks like. Yeah. And that's it right there. So, so yeah, um, back to the Niagara Music Awards as well, which there is a lot of drinking involved at the end of the night. And I remember lots of parties and stuff. But I, did, I was shocked to know that they were still doing it. I didn't know... Because when I was involved, I had a lot of people complain about the Niagara Music Awards. I had a lot of people say, you know, it's not fair, you know, all these things. And um, are they are they doing it virtually this year? Yep. Jim? Yes, okay. they are. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I don't I don't know. There's all the categories, right? Well, good luck to everyone who's doing it. But yeah, I am not involved anymore. Um, mm hmm no, I don't. I like for Charles. Charles plays all the time. I'm surprised he's not nominated. If you're gonna have an award show, like include everybody, 
if you're going to do the region, then include the region. Don't just include your friends. Don't mm. favoritize people just you like. Mm. You have to be fair to everybody. I don't think they're fair. Yeah, and I it's, said it. I mean, if you suck, you suck. Then, okay, but Chunk yeah. is a pretty talented act. It's been around a long time. Yeah, Chunk knows like what he's him or doing. Hate him. Yeah. I think he's great. Yeah. But, uh... I don't know. And uh, he seems like a solid hang, too. Like, I haven't hung around with him too much, but uh, mm -hmm. Jesse Reed was playing maybe the last time he played because he, he's been mm -mm. medically not well for a while. I hope he's better now, but he's had yeah. back issues and other issues. Oh, no. And he was playing at that bar, Boots, or whatever, the country bar that used to be the old Riff Raff bar right beside the Market Square in, on St. Paul Street. Okay. And Jesse was playing, and any time we get a chance to see him, and Chonk was there, and we just standing out front. Yeah, was a hoot hanging around with these guys. They're yeah, they're hilarious. Funny. They're funny, and he's talented. So yeah, yeah, uh, we love you, Chunk. Keep it up, man. Don't worry about the animes. You're NMAs. a winner in the our hearts. The animes are not all. <laughs> so. Yeah. What else? What else are you up to other than being a mom? I know you I'm moved recently. A That's a nightmare. Ugh. I just went through the hell of a move. Yeah. Um, from a house, a three-story house to an apartment. But I got to say that I'm super happy with uh, where I am. It feels more like I'm in a city again because I'm right on Queen Street. Oh, are you? I am. I'm in a, an apartment building. And the thing I had to really go through with this process because this move was brought upon me not on my own accord. It was my landlord wanted to move back in. Um, and you didn't want to live with this them? this whole uh, COVID <laughs> BS that's happening. Um, I didn't think I'd be affected by COVID so much, but I was with this move, with my landlord um, coming back. So the thing I was going to do this winter was I was like, I really want to purge. Like, I really want to get rid of my stuff. Mm. So, um, yeah, move always forces you to reorganize. And... It's just, I find it's funny the things we wish for in our minds, you know, like, okay, this is my goal. This is what I'm going to do. And the universe just gives it to you in a way that's like, it leaves you, you no other choice. You ask for this. Okay. I'm going to get your landlord to kick you out of your fucking house. <laughs> and then you're going to really have to purge, sister. I feel like that's been my life, my whole life. I'm, I've been. I ask for something, I get it the hard way, and but that's fine. I can handle it. Nothing I, comes across to you that you can't handle, even though it feels like that at mm -hmm. the time. I was selling stuff on Facebook. I was like, and then I, I was like, oh, I'm gonna drive my friends nuts. I'm selling like uh, all this stuff. So I started making jokes about it and finding stupid items on Google and pretending I'm selling it, like this old rag doll for two hundred dollars. It was a complete lie. Um, but just like I have to find a way of humor in situations in order for it to um, to pull through. I use the analogy of like when I was a kid living in the basement of my parents, when I was old enough to move from my bedroom down to the basement. So probably 12, 11, 12, 13 years old, whatever. Yeah. Um, and always so into music, right? Even as yeah. a kid, my parents were really into music and it rubbed off. Um, and then. So I've had the music cranked in the basement. My dad was into vending machines, but once in a while his buddy would get pinballs and jukeboxes and stuff like that. So we always had like a crappy, an older pinball machine and some cool. jukeboxes that were going through or before we sold them or whatever, we would always use them. Mm -hmm. So, and I'd attach all the speakers to like get it. So it was rocking. I had a Ouija basement. board growing up. Ooh, we played with the Ouija yeah. board I too. brought spirits into my house. Yeah, no, we stopped doing that when it, yeah. when Satan was conjured up in our living room one time. We're like, okay, I get it. I'm not oh, doing no, that anymore. Oh, no, my house was haunted. But I, I use the analogy of that. like, okay, so you call it the universe. I call it God. You know, my parents used to, um, well, first they'd yell down the stairs. Well, I couldn't hear them. Yeah. So then they'd flick the light. So, oh. but, you know, if you're dancing around or whatever, you're in another part of the basement or whatever, you don't see the light getting flicked. Um, so, and this is what, like, it was kind of like in real estate for me. I wasn't having, it wasn't fulfilling for me for a long time. Right. And then uh, the nightmares got to be outnumbering the good feels for actually helping people. And I'm uh. like, Phew feel like I shouldn't be in this business any longer, right? Yeah. And then, um, and then, uh, you know, I use the analogy of, okay, so sometimes God yells down the stairs and you don't hear him. Get out of the business. Get, I don't want, get, 
Come on, right. get up here. I don't want you in real estate. That's Flick the light. No, you're not seeing the light either? Okay, so. Yeah, sometimes here. we ask for these signs and we yeah. don't see them when they're in your face. No, well, you so just, you, you, you see them, but, but you ignore how? them. You're like a child that's so just So how do you make yourself disobedient. aware yeah. of the signs? Well, to be, I'll, I'll show you. Just you like get stoned. Y- your uh, <laughs> landlord, the universe puts your landlord on you so that he's moving in. You don't have a choice. That's when God is throwing the phone book down the stairs and it's landing flat he on the He threw an anvil. Ba-boom! Actually, Jim, it was an anvil. <laughs> no, but the yeah. you know when the phone book lands flat on the concrete, it mm. makes a sound, you know, like you can't it's like, you know. <laughs> yeah. And so that was that was me getting fired from real estate. <laughs> you know yeah. how difficult it is to be fired from a real estate brokerage? I have no idea. It's it's pretty tough because only your clients. I can only imagine fire you yeah you gotta be you gotta really piss the broker off in some way shape or form to get okay. fired like you really so that Would was me you're, that you're, was me with my filthy mouth that's you're what got trouble. me fired. you like trouble no i don't actually no no everyone says that they say no. they say two things that are wrong about me i don't care yes and i like controversy no i really don't i run from it okay but you run from it. Oh. Well, I won't. I won't not say what I what what I feel is truth. To stay out of it. Right. So if my mouth is going to get me in trouble because I'm speaking truth, fuck it. But I'm not going yeah. out there looking for it. In mm-hmm. fact, you know, um, and I don't know, but six or eight months ago, I got you know I got on here and I was having a hard time going live, and then. When I finally yeah. did give live, I had a few drinks in me. And that's not an excuse. Setup. I take none of this back. But then when I started rolling my mouth, you know, I said an unkind thing about a local politician that kept tweeting Jesus okay. fucking Christ, people which are, I think is just disrespectful to people, people very, that, of any religion, not just um, Christian. Sensitive these days. Oh, Super yeah. Super sensitive. And the like, hate mail. And I put myself in that category of people that are looking to be yeah. outraged. Yeah. You just looking for something to get to pissed off on. about. Yeah. I think there's something to be said for people who don't really give a fuck. I think it's really nice. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I act that way, definitely. Yeah. But I do deeply care. I wouldn't do shows like this. I wouldn't have people like you on the show. That I, yeah. You're here because I care. But yes. it comes off like I don't care because I guess I've got the courage to say what I believe. Yes. And I've been wrong several times. I'm not saying I hold the the corner on truth. and uh, But, you know, I, I will not buy into this this lie that it's my truth. Like you have your truth and I have my truth. No, there's facts, then there's opinions. And we talked about this on the phone just We recently. did. Yeah. There's facts and there's opinions. Mm-hmm. Um, I find Twitter very punchy. You get into there. If you want to be on Twitter, you you want to fight with people. People want to fight with you. I've gotten mm-hmm. into fight arguments with um, some of your people. Mm-hmm. At times I've had to block people. Well, I told you Over, the other day, I didn't retweet I you with the smart ass thing that I was going to say. You said something. Well, I really what? didn't even say what you said. I what didn't did I retweet say? your thing about um, getting it from behind. <laughs> well, Aaron O'Toole fucking me up the ass. Yeah. His ideas with a permanent <laughs> smile on his face. And I'm like, yeah, oh, I'm going to retweet this. I got to quote tweet this. Oh, I thought anal was a reward, not a punishment. And then I thought, okay, um, I'm not going to do that because I don't want my mob to come after you right and i know yeah, my mom isn't okay. that active that's but okay it's i found more love and support on twitter than i ever did on facebook but yeah. it's how you curate your followers right mm. and my followers on facebook are less than 5000 i've got over 10000 on twitter um, yeah, you got a good following. It's it's pretty decent. I've worked hard to get it that way because it's yeah. marketing and it's PR for me, right? But mm-hmm. my Facebook crew think they know me and they they lean left for the most part. I've yeah. got like 5, 10, 15, 20 solid conservatives that like my stuff and say way to go. So is this this is what this is what kind of is crazy to me is that we've all come to this point where where's the ultimate like satisfaction? With on with the online world, is it the more likes, like the better? Is that what it is? It's like gambling. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's s- like oh, it's like money. Like a like is like boom, 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 no, boom. No, it's worse than that. It's a drug. It's, it's, it's dopamine. like attention, mm-hmm. and it's like everyone's addicted to it. And it's dopamine. Looking and 
I, part of me feels like I don't want to be a part of that rat race bullshit. Mm-hmm. And but I'm there. I'm mm. on Twitter. You're participating at some level. But I don't really care if I get more likes than other people. I know I don't. But I mean, is that as someone in the arts, like someone who wants to have an opinion, someone who wants to be known for who they are or has a show, is that the ultimate thing that you want to do is get all these likes? You want to be known, right? That's it. It doesn't that when I'm on my deathbed, I'll be like, oh, my God, I'm so glad I got a million likes on Twitter. (laughs) Oh, man, I killed it in life. But I mean, I'm not saying there's definitely more important things. But there's yeah, definitely more important things, hit. and to me, to it. finding substance in between all that. But um, I do get the whole. It's cool. Someone likes all your stuff. Someone knows what you're saying, and it's mm-hmm. you know, I get that. When are you back on the show? I don't know. That is a good question. I don't. Um, it's. I think um, I'm gonna go either two ways I'm going to maybe try with them again or I'm looking into just doing it from home actually like exactly like how you do it Mm -hmm. you know with the setup so I'm just kind of finding my niche or what I'm going to do I enjoyed it and I thought it was cool and Rafiq brought me on I don't know early on well he he was in the early days he was one of the first guys to have a show and I think I was one of the first guests to come on a show and I guess I disregarded the uh, this is a PG show. Oh. And we started talking about, at that time, oh. uh, weed wasn't legal yet. Oh. And I said, I think there's a market t- to be like a weed broker <laughs> because pe- people are going to need to move this stuff around yeah. once it becomes legal. And I'm surprised there's not like a like an agent that says, yeah, I've got pounds of weed, and if you need it, I'll hook you up with the guy. You don't have to carry it yourself. You just hook them up, and you take a commish. And he's like, oh, See, okay. this is what I'm talking about. And then about. we went to a break, and we went outside. He's like, Jimmy, I, just, I told you, I we're understand. broadcast to the dance studio and all down the street, what are you and I had to, to take it down. They took it down, so now we're not broadcast anywhere because you wouldn't shut your mouth about I'm like, yeah, well, I don't hey, know. Sorry. I thought we were an internet platform. I thought we didn't have to worry I about the I think being real is like the best thing you could do. And even I'm, I don't want to have, I don't want to f- be fake. You know, I'm not fake. I don't want to be fake. Like what you see on Instagram and all that is not who you're going to meet. Because I feel like a lot of people try to have this persona that they are perfect mm-hmm. in their own way. And I am not turned on by that i'm actually turned on by the opposite of people just being real and saying things and maybe creating a little bit of a stir and um so it's like calling people on their bullshit you know and i like doing that i like when people you can call me on my bullshit Mm -hmm. but um it's just being real and honest and that's what i appreciate about our phone call there the the, the limited interaction that we had the other day is like almost the first thing out of your mouth was <laughs> um you know what i appreciate because i think i was thanking you for still being my friend right because you really don't know like, thank pe- you for being my friend you know, and you're welcome it's reciprocated um, you know I, I love you you we've had some great hangs and yeah we, if you yeah, come we out as a as a, an alt left feminine feminazi that believes that you know boarding a child at nine months is okay then I'll still love you because I don't. I don't care. You want to talk about no, that, Jim? No, I don't. But I can hate your ideas and still I love hate you. Your ideas sometimes. <laughs> I, I fucking hate them. I think they're bullshit. But you very early. Here's on, Jim's idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm very early on, on in the conversation though. The other day, you're like, well, you know, what I like about you is your character, and you're the same guy everywhere. You don't pretend to be anything but, and you, yes. you have the courage to say what you think, and I might not agree with it, but I love you for it. And I, I was like, oh, thank you. I'd rather you know? have ten followers with substance than a hundred people with, ah. you know, I, I like, I like quality over quantity. Yeah. It's easy to put the mask on and be something for someone else. Yeah. I think we all do that to a certain extent. But You only got one life. Just be you. Mm. And if you think you suck, then work on it. And was it you that told me, yeah, um, like, I can only talk when I'm alive? Did you say that to me? Yeah. (laughs) Uh, What was that? It was like, um, 
I want to say what you when need I'm dead. to say. I can't speak when I'm dead. That was it. I won't be able. Yeah, like when I'm dead, I won't be. I won't be able to say anything. <laughs> so now that you know you can say something, say it now because when you're dead, you won't be able to mm-hmm. anymore. You'll you won't have to. St- and then you'll waste your whole life just stumbling over, oh, maybe they won't like that. Maybe they won't like me. Maybe they, and we're human. I get it. We have our insecurities, but sometimes you got to say fuck you to your insecurities. Just be you. Mm-hmm. You know? You sound like the wisdom. Do I sound crazy? No, you sound like the wisdom of Ivy. What do you mean? Well, I think that, She's... you know, I've, I'm so blessed. I put um, all my energy into her. I have, uh, an ex-girlfriend in my life who's still like one of my best friends Mm -hmm. um and she's got a four-year-old granddaughter and she's just i told you on the phone adorable Uh, yeah but the love of my life like if i can't imagine loving a kid that much and not not being your own yeah she's just incredible and i said the other day somebody says oh i really like that i feel i feel like she cleans my soul when i'm with her i told her the other day i'm like liv like you, do you know how much I like hanging around you? And she says, why? I said, because you make me happy when I'm with you. Like, Yeah, you. kids do and that. And I feel, like I, I tweeted a couple of years ago, or maybe a year ago, I'm taking life lessons, and the instructor is a three-year-old. I'm in a life mm-hmm. lessons crash course, and Absolutely. the teacher is three years old. My the kid wisdom makes that you me get laugh, from these, Jim. Like, you wouldn't believe the stuff she does. There's a strange, she, innocent wisdom that comes from them, she's too. She's got something about her that is not like she doesn't she's got a lot of character even her teachers have told me and stuff like that like today this morning she wanted to hear that song um by nick jonas um i'm a sucker for you and she wants to hear it in the car like so i find it on my phone and i play it and she's singing it and we listen to it like three times in a row so she's singing the lyrics like and it's so funny to see a four-year-old sing these adult like adult lyrics and so I drop her off. We walk to, you know, up to the school to drop her off. And there's always like a teacher standing there to guide everybody. She goes, hey, teacher, do you know I'm a sucker for you? <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. She's like, yeah, you know I'm a sucker for you, right? And she's, I'm just like, oh, my God. She says the funniest stuff. Like, I'm dying. She's a little bit of a performer. Oh, my God. You have no idea. Oh, I have some. I've seen enough of the videos. Yeah. And people, honestly, Jim, people like I don't even know ask me about her. I love her videos. Really? She, I guess her videos have gotten people through COVID a bit. Wow. Like little posts. Yeah. Like, I just love her. Like, long cool. messages. I, it's so nice because mm-hmm. I'm just like, well, I might as well share this with her. I can't just bottle this little four-year-old up and keep her to myself. Mm-hmm. Do these little photos and videos and things like that. and. I just, yeah, we're luck. I'm lucky. Yeah, very you lucky. are very fortunate. And yeah, I'm just thinking, and so are like, you, right? Yeah, um, you said you're gonna be, f- you're, you're approaching forty. Uh, I'll well, no, I'll be forty in about four years. Oh, okay. But yeah, I was gonna it's say approaching. That, that it'd make it ten easy, years easy if you're gym. gonna be forty. So, yeah, I guess six years I've known you because you're. I remember you being twenty eight because I remember oh, wow. commenting sitting on your porch with your roommate or whatever there. <laughs> And I was, Where somebody's like, meet? "Where, um, yeah, blah blah blah." Yeah. Where did we meet? We met at a maze. Pretty sure. It was definitely at Taps. One of the was first it? times because I remember. I think so. You were driving doing around the in the five thirty-five, trying to find a place to smoke one or do whatever we were up to. You were a part of the green party at that. You yeah. wanted to. Oh, you yeah. were running. Oh, was I? Or maybe, yeah, uh, yeah, maybe it was at Clark party. Bitter's, uh, or maybe we were doing an event there for Clark Bitter or something. Yes. But, there's anyway. a guy that just, whoosh, oh yeah, he calls me a religious oh fanatic, and um, you know, Everybody what else? Has someone their else, opinions. someone else said, I got Trump's dick in my mouth. I'm like, well, that's not very nice. I'm that's not, not very nice. Not that's even not gay, a good thought. If I was, <laughs> Trump doesn't have a dick. What are you <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but uh, yeah, it sounds like you've been. Um, getting some wisdom from your child there as far as life lessons go and from my friends from people from uh i think it's always good to for me to push myself outside of my comfort zone which i'm still working on uh doing the show did that for me um but yeah wisdom uh with age 
not in my 20s anymore. I feel that Jim. too. And, um, you know, for me, it's happened <clears throat> a lot over the last five years. Like I said, in 2015, mm-hmm. n- now that we've had fixed election dates, all my memories are coming up as elections because it's October. Everything's changing. 12 years ago, I was a Green Party candidate. Five years ago, I was a Green Party candidate. In 2014, I was a So all these memories are coming up. And my first election was 93. I was 24. I'm not 24. I don't believe those things anymore. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, I was talking to a young girl on Twitter the other day. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. She's 30 or something like that. She's not that young. But... It's young now. You know, and she's well-educated and got her own business and stuff like this. And she thinks she knows it all. So we we don't spar publicly, but we do on DMs. Mm -hmm. And... uh, I came away from it going like, wisdom comes with age. You can have like G has an infant. I think it comes with experience as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. But like a guy like G has for his age, when I met him, he was 19, 18, 19 years old or something like that. Mm-hmm. But he had a profound amount of wisdom for a young guy. Who? G. Who's G? G Sharp. You hear. Oh, Road waves. yeah. For a young age. Yeah, he's 19. just, he's, he's got a lot of wisdom. Well, he's almost yeah. 30 now, but he's got, he's got a lot of wisdom. But, you know, I just came away from that conversation with the, that friend on, on Twitter the other day by going, you can't expect wisdom from somebody that's 22 years younger than you. The same level of it, because it comes with experience. It comes with age and you can't mm-hmm. have it without. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's, yeah, I just, yeah, I think, you know, I've, I've been pretty good at, uh, I'm my own worst critic, but I've really given yeah. myself some room to pat myself on the back for the openness to try on new ideas and go, yeah, hey, wait a second, you're right. My facts on that are wrong. And so, I mean, that's happened a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. But mm-hmm. over the last five years, I didn't, I hated Donald Trump. I didn't watch his show. I thought he was a buffoon. Yeah. But now I look at him and go, you know, I found myself agreeing with some of his immigration policies. I, I love the fact that he's anti-establishment. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that he doesn't have any problem putting his middle finger in the air and telling people that just like talk about a guy. Mm-hmm. Like, again, we got to find a new description for it. it. It seems like he doesn't care, but if he didn't care, he wouldn't have left his private life to I be think he's, president. You know? I think he's doing this whole sh- thing where. The more he doesn't care, he knows it makes other people care. Mm. So they fight more to do better things, possibly. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, the more you say to someone, fuck you, they're going to try and do the opposite and prove you wrong. Mm. Right? Maybe, yeah. Like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not really a Trump supporter. I I don't hate him. I don't wish death upon him. Um, I don't agree mm. with his tactics so much i don't Mm. think it kind of like pisses america off a lot Mm. um he's kind of like against his own country in a way um it's new it's different he's not your typical president for sure Mm. and but for canada like aaron o'toole is basically trump's little canadian twin and aaron o'toole is the worst name ever (laughs) <laughs> Who the hell? And he spells Prime it like Minister you do too. O'Toole? He, Jesus Christ! Yeah. Get me the fuck out of here! <laughs> I'm, I don't like, I don't like that. And his name's spelled the same way as me. Yeah, well, he, you should um, be an A A R if you're a boy. No, I mean, it's, there's no shoulda, coulda, A-R-R. woulda, but it's just a little weird seeing a man with like a the woman's name. Like if my name was spelled A A R O N, that would be strange. But yeah, well. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't really, I like politics, but I don't dive into it too much because I just get too, I'll get pissed Mm -hmm. off or something. You know, it's funny how, uh, I think, oh, I know Mm -hmm. that Trump's injection into the political world (laughs) has made a whole bunch of people that didn't give a shit about politics. Look at it. Look True. at the issues. Like I know yeah, for me, I see that I wouldn't have looked at immigration, ice, the wall, cages, that whole all those issues that are all yeah. around illegal immigration, which I'm completely against, even in Canada. No, come across the border, 
at the checkpoints legally, mm-hmm. welcome. Well, we get the chance to turn you down. We're in the and you can't just sneak across the border. So I found myself going, okay, so wait a second. I don't know there was cages. I didn't know Obama had the cages. Yeah, he kind of. I didn't, I didn't know he that he was sending more people back, and I, I, no. So I got it forced me to get educated on some of the issues that I wasn't. I revisited mm-hmm. abortion. I revisited my takes on capital punishment, on guns, on free speech, and some of those things I didn't have to tweak too much. Some of them I had a drastic shift on. I'm pro-abortion. But, but if it wasn't for Trump, I wouldn't have looked at those issues. I wouldn't. I had no interest in American politics before Trump. Right. So, and I think that he's done that not mm-hmm. only for guys like me who are political addicts at every Canadian level. I mean, every level, right. the city, the region, the province, the feds, like even other outside political bodies like the Human Rights Tribunal, obsessed with what goes on at them, how they operate, how oh. unfair they are sometimes. But then American politics, I didn't give a rat's ass about until no, I didn't watch him come down the escalator. Like, I wasn't a fan of his at all. Right. I think I was just forced to, to look at it. Just to see. And then I start going, hmm, wow. I didn't, I didn't know that. And I think I'm not the only one. I think a lot of these people, the problem is. They don't want to admit it. Well, no, but the ones that have such limited in, uh, knowledge into the political issues and the depth of the kids, these political issues are deep. You got to go through a lot of stats and history and all that kind of stuff. And I've kind of kept up on that, at least in it's Canada. So like they uh, all come out like outdated. all the TDS, the, the Trump derangement syndrome, where it doesn't matter. He could cure cancer and the people would say, oh, great. Look at all the people you put out of work. Yeah. At the cancer society. Yeah. Like that's that's how the infection of TDS, Trump derangement system, syndrome goes. And so, you know, everyone's an expert on masks everyone's an epidemiologist now. Everyone's a political expert on all the issues because he's misogynist because he grabs women by the pussy, you know. Yeah, these platforms where people, like I find a lot of artists, like they're on Twitter always saying their political opinions and things like that, which is cool. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone has a voice. Mm -hmm. There's an Andy Warhol said, in the future, everyone's going to have at least 15 minutes of fame, every single human. And it's true. You could say a tweet and a million people could like it. And there's your moment of fame. Just like that. Mm-hmm. That's where it's at. Twitter. Uh, it's crazy. Instagram, mm-hmm. Facebook. But it's the um, I'm just I'm not even I'm steering away from the politics. I'm talking more about online. Mm-hmm. Um, how addicting it can get and how much of your life you put into something that everybody else is doing, like Facebook. I I know all these strangers, what they're doing and thinking constantly, and I don't want to see it anymore. Yeah. I'm just, it's just ridiculous. Charette said the same thing. I should not have to carry the burden of knowing what everyone is doing When I'm in a grocery store, do I go, hey, hey, everybody, (laughs) this morning, Ivy, Ivy took a shit on the floor. My cat did too. Hey, guys. Like it? <laughs> Do you like it? Are you laughing? Great. Like I can't. Uh, you can't no right. one does that. No. But people say the most like they're open about really like personal things. They want attention like fighting with my husband. Blah, blah, blah. Or mm-hmm. um, I get it if it brings people a sense of belonging and if it makes people happy. Fine. But like it's quite the um, downward spiral of like internet. You just get locked into it. I think what it's causing us people mental judge health. people more on their life on the internet than they do when they see them. Yeah, and people yeah. don't see each other because they see them on the internet. Yeah, it's it's destroying Facebook. our mental health for sure. I don't think it's, yeah, it's just crazy. And not only that, I try to. I've said this on the show several times that you have to remember, like this is me. I'm a real human being when I record. Mm-hmm. Some like. But as a TikTok video, that's not me. Okay, I am not. I hate TikTok. I, I, I'm just gonna I'm hate on everything. I've only got a few videos up. It's funny. I, I'm, I get obsessed watching it, and TikTok knows what to send me to keep me addicted. But anyway, exactly you, you have to forget that my Twitter account's not human. My Facebook account is not human. Mm-hmm. My Instagram account not human. See, I share people. I share what I want. 
And, yeah. you know, it goes back to, okay, you want your 15 minutes of fame? I haven't had one of those tweets. I've got 10,000 followers on Twitter. I worked hard to get there because, again, it's a marketing machine for me. It's PR. I use it to promote my shows and and, and it's self-expression and comedy. Like, I'm hilarious. I don't care if you think I'm funny. I'm funny. And yeah. if it, even if I'm the only person that finds me funny, yeah. I'm still hilarious. That's like saying I'm a great catch. Yeah. <laughs> Would you want to say I'm not? Well, I'm not a great catch. No. You say uh, but I wouldn't have, say that, but if you have you something know, that goes viral, say that the let's other say day. I, I've never had you know a tweet that's got twenty five thousand likes or you know a hundred thousand likes or retweets or whatever. Like Trump's but is got that why we Trump's do last this? tweet about getting sick. He's got almost two million likes on it. You know, I'm I've got COVID. I'm going to think. Yeah, like that's a lot of action. We can but speak even if, to the we can hear what the president's thoughts. Yeah, on Twitter because of Twitter. Yeah. But, but the point I'm making is, is, is even crazy. if you get your 15 minutes of fame on Twitter, mm -hmm. it might give you 100 followers if yeah. you get something go viral. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's over. Yeah, Your Twitter account doesn't get a blue check because, ooh, you don't get a plaque from Twitter going, congratulations, you made it. I know. So, you know, that, you don't get that, money. That's, no, that success is fleet. Now, on YouTube, you get money. If you get a, thou if you get yeah. a million views, yep. you make a thousand bucks. That's amazing. Uh, if you're monetized, if you don't have your thousand followers and you get jack shit. Yeah. Uh, but uh, YouTube is actually where it's at mm -hmm. for anything online. Do you want to be censored? It has to be censored. See, I no, don't they like... censor me. Oh, clowns. they do. Yeah. Yeah. I've got five channels That's now fun. because they keep censoring my channels and taking them down. But I had a channel with uh, that was 10 years old. It had old videos of my mom when she was alive and the, the slideshow that we put up at her funeral was up there and just all kinds of old, old, my old speech from the Green Party in and 2006. They took it out? Yeah, well, they, they flattened the channel. They, they, they so just. You're not really in control. No. And there was no reason. I had no like hate yeah. speech violations. I had no like guideline strikes. I had n nothing. Mm -hmm. And one day I just went there, March 17th, and my channel was gone. No. And. Uh, over since November to March, I I went from 50 right. subs and 100,000 views total to 6,000 subs and 3 million views. Whoa. And I was making decent money. Like wow. 3 million views is... Three. You got 3 million views? On... Yeah. yeah. I, before they canceled the channel, I was at Get 3 million views. I had broken you, 3 million views. Yeah. And 6,000 subs is a big deal on because see, I was... See, we're congratulating on views and likes. For it's eight so years. Crazy. No, but I was getting paid. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it was my... Like I started taking it seriously like a job. Like, yeah. You know, sometimes see. I do these interviews and I'm like, okay, that was great. I love Aaron. That was a great conversation. But what the fuck am I doing this for? Like, you know, and then okay. six months from now, someone will go, hey, I saw Aaron and she said this thing and boom, it changed my mind. Thank you. Yeah. So you get sometimes you get so some I get half of that thousand dollars. No, so now I've got nothing. Uh, so now I'm my, just. Do we sign anything here? Uh, <laughs> I'm creating new channels faster than they can censor me. See, that's the thing. When I started my show, Jim, I didn't get, I didn't make any money. I had to actually pay a babysitter to watch my kid to do the Viz show, and I'm like, I just did it because I loved it. It brought me joy. So, mm -hmm. um. I but uh, you know I want to do it eventually to make money to live. I have a kid, I have a home, mm -hmm. a cat, my life. I like makeup. I like clothes. I want to travel. So like, where do you make money? Doing what you do, loving what you do, when everybody else is doing the same thing. I've got the answer. Well, like yeah, tell me. I don't know if you want to hear it, but uh, I, I give, do. I give this I to a friend of mine. Um, Especially, I don't want to be sexist, but especially for a good-looking woman. Okay. Um, I think where it's at is vulnerability. So, yeah. and especially vlogs. So okay. you do a video diary, and if you and I haven't reached this level of vulnerability where I can share, you know, the things I really struggle, like the personal mm -hmm. things that I really struggle about. Yeah. If you're open about those, yeah, you get instant instant following for instance if you were to start a video to, on your youtube channel and you go okay today's day one i'm quitting drugs mm -hmm. help me 
Mm-hmm. Like I've really struggled. I'm tired of being drunk. And you list all the impacts on your life. And then you list everything you want to be. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, you create this new way of being around it. And then you enroll people in keeping you accountable. Mm-hmm. Like check on me. Like ask me because here you're getting accountability from strangers and you, you could have them in your life too. Yeah. And change is difficult, right? Yeah. But people absolutely lap up like a kitten vulnerability. Yeah. Crazy. Eh? Putting yourself out there in a way that makes it so easy to be made fun of, to be attacked, to yeah. laughed at. Yeah. Uh, I think people just find that tremendously sexy. And I think somehow they find it addictive because they want to come back to see how you're doing. Mm-hmm. Not only that, every time you share something, they go, <gasps> Oh my God, what is she I can't she just believe say? she said that. And yeah. that's so brave. She doesn't give a fuck. Meanwhile, yeah. you see how I say you don't care it comes into it? It actually, there's another expression for appearing to not care when actually what it's based in is the fact that you care exactly and then but people will see something in you yeah and go oh that's me i feel like that when my pastor preaches like he's talking directly from me like he took the sermon from something i said in men's group and i'm like oh he's talking about me not realizing that almost everyone in the auditorium is feeling the the same same thing. thing and that's a that's the quality of a great speaker is when you can touch them that way. Yeah. So you think that they're talking to them. But I think that's um, a powerful medium, mm-hmm. YouTube. And if you committed to a daily vlog, it could only be two or three minutes where oh, you wow. just come on and go, you know what? I want to kill my child today, you know, or something. Like I'm at the end of my rope or my mental oh. health is failing or I got this Is this, this what you really and- think of me, Jim? You really think I feel these things? No. I'm just saying the vulnerability, I think, is, uh, and I haven't Well, you know I what? I did that, a selfie of me crying it's... last week, and I got the most feedback off of the one selfie where I was, like, <laughs> crying in it. Well, there's trolling um, for attention, and then there's, like, authentic well, I mean, vulnerability. It's, how, it's honestly how I felt. I was actually legit And that's crying. authentic vulnerability. I wasn't it saying was that you were trolling for attention. No, no, no. But you got it. You got it, didn't you? That's my point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I see where you're going with that. Hmm. Yeah, that's really insightful. I don't think there's anything sexier than a little healthy self-deprecation, I find to be hilarious. If you can't laugh at yourself, then, you know, as long as it's not an unhealthy form of I'm a loser. Yeah. As long as it's like in a comedic form, I'm a fan of that. Uh, The vulnerability. And I shouldn't say just for women only because... I think women are easier to look at and it's probably got nothing to do with the your how you look although it, I, I think it helps for followers like I see the the pretty faces on Twitter just boom and people they get follows like yeah like crazy I'm a pretty and, face but if on a, Twitter. if a man was a like if a man was about to do what I just gave you a You know, kind of, I got the secret for blowing up a YouTube channel and making Mm -hmm. serious money by being vulnerable. Yeah, I don't think that's any different for a guy like me that would come out here every day and vlog about my troubles and being really vulnerable. I think even more so, some people will go, man, that's that's like, I don't know a guy like that that can cop to all those ways of being. Mm -hmm. You have like an old milk bottle for your water. I like that. Yeah, I stopped. Uh, I stopped drinking out of plastic a long time ago, and yeah. now I've been fortunate enough to to be drinking uh, ricochet ricochet water. It's the wettest water going, and it's uh, ricochet is like a it's an E S L E S I L technology. I think it was an old NASA technology, and somehow it uses a low level electrolysis to clean the water, oh. but it leaves the kelp and the sodiums and the salts and the minerals and everything in it. Oh, so it just okay. takes the bacteria out. Um, but it's a like, I don't know if you can taste the difference, but if you Catch were- Catch the taste. Yeah, if you- that? No, but if you were to drink this for a month and then you drank RO water, you'd know the difference. So you buy this? Yeah, Ricochet, it's right on Secor Drive or, yeah, Secor Drive here in hmm. St. Catharines. And that's kind of the bummer about it is they're not 
They're not easy to act. They will deliver it to your house for a charge, but yeah. they're not, you can't just go to Avondale and pick up ricochet water. You can only get Coke or Pepsi water, and that's all. Um, that's horrible. That's all reverse osmosis, stripped clean. I call it oh, naked yeah. water because it's got no minerals or vitamins or kelp or any of the the good things that you want in your water. Mm-hmm. You don't want the bacteria, but the other things are the trace elements. They're all they're all good for you. Hmm. So, wow. I've got I've switched to ricochet, and I. I, uh, I've i been a big fan. Even since I had Ricochet on my show at CH, uh, CHSC. They, yeah? 1220 CHSC. Are they your like, sponsor? Uh, no. Well, I they just are ha- now. I just had them on the they show. They should be. I tell them I talk about them all the time. They don't yeah? Care. You know, they give me a free bottle of water really every once water. in a while. Yeah. You can taste it. Yeah. You can taste the difference. And was, people are like, no, you're not supposed to be taste your water. I'm like, yeah, no. You th- water's you supposed taste to taste water. good. Yeah. You're not supposed to drink it and go... It tastes no. like nothing. You can tell when you have bad water. Um, a lot of things I've been doing actually this summer, when I was thinking about water, I found this thing. I didn't know they existed. You can buy them at like Walmart or probably Canadian Tire. It's like a tube and it's a filter. Oh, yeah. So if you're like, say, on a boat up north right. and you need water, you literally drink it through the filter and you can drink seawater. You can drink it right out of a, like a Any mud puddle. shit water, I guess it will filter it. I mm-hmm. thought, that is so clever. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've been going on a lot of hikes lately, actually. Um, around like the, you know, the other day I did the metal steps to the um, the wooden steps. Oh, yeah. Have you ever done Whirlpool? that, Jim? Yeah. It's good. The wooden steps are great. That's down right at the Whirlpool. Yeah, you can no, go down I and... did the metal steps to the wooden steps. Oh, you can walk that way? Yeah, you can walk the whole... It's two hours. It's two hours from steps to steps? Yeah. Up top? Yeah, uh, you can no. go up top or you can you stay along the water. You go down the metal steps? Yep. Yeah. And then you go along the edge? Yep. Yeah. Or you can go along the water. Yeah, you can go to the bottom and then walk over. Oh, you yes, can. in the water, right. Yeah, and there's there's an area where there's a rock two and you hours, have to climb eh? under... And you get rained on, and it's kind of, it's pretty badass. It's pretty cool. Cool. Chris Curry says, yeah, you are funny. You're funny. (laughs) You're funny. Shut up, Chris. (laughs) I haven't reconnected with Chris Curry in a while. Chris is a nice guy. I know. Um, Um, I don't think he supports my political views all that much, but I hope he's still my friend. That's not Great facility down there. Yeah, I know. It's whatever. Yeah. You know, I got extra time for people that are like, I could care less. Come on over. We'll have pizza and beer. Pizza. So good. Rex Pizza. Rex Pizza? Oh, the best on the planet. Okay, where? In Rex St. and Wellen. No, Welland. Oh. Niagara Street. You got to do it. I got to do it. Yeah. It's worth the drive. I don't care where okay. you come from. Well, my uh, mom lives in Welland. Yeah, oh, yeah. You got to do it. She tries to get me to Apparently, the no, no, Noki. No, Noki. Apparently, the Noki is really good there, too. But that's old school Italian family. Ooh. But that's thin crust. I like pizza that when it's hot, you can hold it and it stands straight. Ooh, is but that it's the way? Thin, it's or thin and crunchy. It? When you crunch it, it's dry and it snaps. That's how a crust should be. It shouldn't be this thick and gooey. It wasn't last summer. Well, like I love pizza and I love Mexican food. Like I love nachos, tacos, mm-hmm. all that stuff. So it was last summer. I had cravings for nachos every night at twelve o'clock. And I'd make them. And I was a sk- I was so skinny that summer. I wouldn't eat all day. And I'm like, oh, I want nachos. <laughs> and I'd make nachos. Yeah. And I still do. I freaking love nachos so much. And pizza. <laughs> Is that crazy or what? Yeah, you got to try Rex pizza. I will you try will Rex pizza. Sorry. Thank you. And uh, <clears throat> a few years ago, I went to... Uh, to get pizza from the Rex and I bought a tray. I always get a tray, right? You got to get the trays. Yeah. And there's yeah. no point. You need leftovers. So I took yeah. the tray out and I put it on the back of my car and I had a sub playing. Oh, no. And I took a piece out and my stepbrother was checking out something in the fairing of my car. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there eating it while Mikey's checking out my car. There was something, I don't know, something caught up underneath it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm eating, I'm like, but we're talk- I'm talking to him in the front of the car and over here, sitting there here. Thwack. I look. <gasps> the pizza had vibrated off the trunk and it flipped while it was falling and oh. fell on its face on oh, the parking no. lot That's with a- the lid open. So 
I'm there trying to scoop it up. I, 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 think I even took one. I took a piece off and tried, and I'm like, oh, man, I got to, I got to, like, because I was starving, and I had the only piece in my hand. So I tried another one. I got a piece of gravel in my mouth. So I just, I scooped it all up. I told Mikey to move the car because now the shithawks are circling around. Well, it's the back, it's the back, oh. you know, Park Street in Welland, right? Park and King. Yeah. Yeah, King Street. So I pile all the pizza back into the pizza box and I took it back into took the kitchen. Back. And the guy, I ring the bell. And because you get a, you got to drive around back, the delivery, and you ring the bell and the guys from the kitchen come out and you say, what's your order? And you give them the name and they go get your, your thing. It's, it's old school. And it's like, it, you swear, like just walking into the place, your clothes are drenched. You're going to smell exactly like fryer oil because it's blowing on you as you walk in the back it's door. It's one of those spots. Yeah. So I, I bring this thing and I open the lid and dude goes, what happened? <laughs> I'm like, I had a little bit of an accident. Can you, and I, what I, I said to him, I said, you, can you recreate this masterpiece for me? He goes, yeah, absolutely. So me Good and Mikey guys. went to the bar and had a beer and they mm -hmm. called the bar when it was ready and we went back and grabbed it. And then he wouldn't take money from me. No. I'm like here, no. He says, no, he came all the way from St. Catharines. Don't worry about That's it. So I was telling the story sweet. to the takeout guy that this week, because mm -hmm. I grabbed it when we went to see my son, the hurricane. Mm -hmm. I went to, to Welland first, watched the petrol can get robbed by some skid. Went, oh. And then we went back, picked up the pizza and took the pizza over to the dry, the, the old uh, Detroit motor Inn on Lundy's lane and town line road. That's mm -hmm. a, they put, they've got an outdoor stage there and you drive up in your car and you watch a concert outside and you're supposed to stay beside your vehicle. And it was, it was, how a, was that? Well, it was good to see my son, experience? The Hurricane, and then G yeah. came on and played a guitar solo I for one of their songs. so and, much. And then Revive the Rose opened for them. I missed Revive the Rose, but I've seen them enough. Mm -hmm. And then they opened for the Trues the next night. So it was cool, other than, like, they literally come over to you and say, get back in your car. I'm yeah. standing beside my car. There's no one around. Yeah. Even the cars are social distanced. Wow. Like, they're 12 feet apart. And okay. like it was like I was out enough that I could bounce up and down and dance to the songs I wanted to dance to and get my mm -hmm. get my blood pressure up before get somebody would come over and say. Uh, but then I watched I walked to see, see Ashley Standish. She was at the merch table. Mm -hmm. I you know I fist bumped Jacob and talked to Dano and Mikey uh, Farkas came up. He had a girl with him and just uh, give him a big hug. Like yeah. Mike was like, no problem, no mask, no thought. Like, come here. I give yeah. him a big hug. Jacob was like, you know, he's the headline act. I don't want the people around to see that he's breaking the rules because they said no hugging, no shaking hands. If you Life see so. Life has just become so crazy. Yeah, so they didn't give me a, a, a problem. As long as you were walking, you yeah. could go to the bathrooms and come back, but you couldn't go to another car and stand outside it with your friends or whatever. Yeah, I hate to say that there's going to be a new normal, but I can't wait to go back to normal. Yeah. Because I think... I don't think I it's the new normal. It's the new now. I hope that we go no. back to... Okay. If anyone's well, that's worried, gone. it's not the new normal. It's just the new now. I don't want to see masks in 10 years, in two years. I don't want to... I don't want to be... I like, mean, I'm still opening the door with my sleeve. You know, like... I just or feel my, like... To my shirt tail. It's just... Uh, I'm not Germ a conspiracy banner. person... Um, but 2020 is quite the year, dominant 2020, and so many things just happened right in this year. And I, I don't know. I feel like the government knows a lot more than what we know. I think they know. Thank God. Can you imagine if we knew it all? We wouldn't, we wouldn't leave the house if we knew what was really going on. Remember when Trump said there was aliens? No. Or Yeah, there was the whole alien thing. There was a video released by the... Um, Oh, man. Where is it? Arizona? Yeah, Area 51. Yeah. There yeah, was an Area it's... 51 video released. Yep. He probably released it and, and talked about it right when he was in trouble for something. <laughs> but um, <laughs> there's aliens. No one remembers that? There's so many right things that Right when he was in trouble year. for something? You're such a mother. That's what he fucking does. <laughs> His taxes, he gets COVID. It's so, <gasps> it's like sideswiping. <laughs> It's it's totally well, at least you're not one of those people. I, I was waking up to texts from people I care about going, "Ha ha, your hero, my hero, uh, no, not my hero, got COVID, <laughs> looks good on him, karma." I'm like, I wouldn't wish who illness wishes on anybody death on anyone or sickness unless you killed my daughter. Yeah, That's the only thing. It's got to be. And you want to kill my kid? 
I've become sensitive as a woman um, as ever since I have my kid, like watching things and stuff. Um, I can't uh, anything with kids or animals. And this is predictable. Like dying, like John Wick. Okay, you ever see John Wick mm -hmm. where they kill the puppy? I no, cried. I, didn't see that part. I, I had to turn off the movie, and I like legit cried. Mm -hmm. I was like, I can't that puppy, and I don't even know where it comes from. It's just there. You know it's what? This, this is like empathy. I'm glad you you led down that road because this is something that some women would be offended by. To, really? Yeah, because women are like stereotypically this? that way. Especially now, I'm not saying that men after childbirth aren't similar. I know some men that don't look at like you don't make fun of young girls anymore oh. because, or they stop going to strip joints because those girls are someone's daughter. And now that I have a daughter, I don't do those things. I don't talk that way about mm -hmm. girls. I get it. Oh, I don't get it because I don't have a daughter, but I get what they're going through. I've got enough. But it's men. their choice as a stripper to yeah. be a stripper. We're all adults. And yeah, sex yeah. Isn't but a I have crime. A, I have enough man male friends in my life that have shifted since I knew them before mm -hmm. they had kids, and then after kids, my sense of humor they couldn't tolerate as much because they're like Jimmy. It's I got a daughter now. You can't yeah. like yeah, dude. Can't talk like that. And but yeah. women are like that even before childbirth, but after, it's like you're an animal. You're having a litter that you need to protect. I'm not mm. doubt, I'm just saying it's yeah. a way of like, women are protective and they see the world as potential threats for their child. Men don't. Men are off work, they're handing out cigars, <gasps> they're making money. They're not at home protecting the, as much and mm -hmm. but women are very stereotypical stereotypically that way mm -hmm. after childbirth because everything yeah. is seen as a potential threat to their child and you're not going to touch my child you're not going to affect I... my child in a negative fashion no 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 oh yeah i'm i'm totally protective of her mm -hmm. she's untouchable no one can i i try to raise her to be really strong and independent and to just to be herself so Hopefully that works. Wow, it looks like you're doing a decent job so Thanks. far. You have not muted her personality, that's for sure. No. She's a performer. It shouldn't be muted. Um, as a woman, uh, we're allowed to have emotions, I feel, you know. I think we all are. We're allowed. Yeah, but that's a nice. lot of people think, like, it's not okay if a woman gets angry. It's not okay if a woman's upset. Oh, you're being a baby, da-da-da. You know, you got too much emotion or whatever. And... um no, we're allowed to have those things. We, I feel no. like, yeah, we are. No crying. But I mean, no, yeah. Be a man. Know. Man up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I do know, but. So you don't know when the show's coming back. That's okay. I'm and just you're gonna, gonna do it for my house, Jim. Fuck yeah. Um, I've got Paul Layton coming on tomorrow. Do you? Uh, yeah, I like Paul. He's a little bit of an oddball. I like that that about him. I can I put myself in the oddball category sometimes. Um, hell yeah, of a musician. Yeah, you're an oddball for sure. Yeah, hell of a musician. Yeah. Uh, he heard my um my um session with uh, Jennifer Lynn yesterday, mm -hmm. and immediately recognized that I had no treatment on the mics. I said, do I have treatment on the mics now? I think I do. I think I've got What's compression. Treatment? Well, like compression, noise suppression. Okay. I don't have a gate running. I've got a little bit of gain running. So yeah, but he, I don't know, but he's bringing over a Yamaha mixing board tomorrow and his keyboards. Cool. So rather than, like this is an iRig. It's pretty basic. Yeah. It's cheap. And I've kind of upgraded things around it because it's still providing me the with. purpose that I need, like it, which is two XLR microphone inputs. So, and then it, I can run this into my camera. So I can run these mics into my iPhone and have good sound oh. from my iPhone. You run it from your iPhone? No, I'm not doing that now because I'm going through OBS. So I broadcast, okay. I broadcast on four platforms live. Mm -hmm. Plus, I'm recording it on the on the system. So, but it used to be that everything I was doing, it was that iPhone with these mics hooked up into it and then I'd have to take it off the phone and upload it So this is totally different like right now I just got a small picture of me in the corner and you're the big shot. You're the big oh. foot oh, like camera angle cool and um, It's made for flexibility, but tomorrow he's gonna bring 
his mixing board over. So these mics okay. somehow will probably be hooked up through this little Yamaha. And I'm interested to see how much better the sound is because hmm. I've always wanted to try and get the studio sound down mm -hmm. here, but you're not going to do it with a two input, two input iRig, right? I'm going to, I have to learn all these two things. I, I went to school for sound production a long time ago. Um, and it was very technical, like this kind of stuff. And I have to, I do have that kind of mind. I can hook up things. I've been a stage manager for so many things mm -hmm. and for, you know, all this stuff. So yeah, I, I do want to do my own show at home, actually something mm. that'll. Have you got a YouTube channel? Ivy does. Okay. I need to have my own. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, I am working on a movie in the spring too, coming up. Okay. Um, so that's another thing. And I'm painting a your lot. own movie. No, it's actually um, the director is, um, his name's Christopher. He's from Toronto. He, we had to stall it, I guess. We were supposed to start filming it actually like this month. But um, I think it was some, something that's going to go in the spring with Ryan Lunn. Oh, yeah. Remember him? Yeah, I do. You know him? Yeah. Yeah, he played at my, sh my last show at Sessions on the river. Right. So hopefully Green. that um, pulls together. Who knows? With COVID and everything going on. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, some things happening. You know? I had a bit part in uh, Jason Lupish's film, um, Fight. Fight? I was, yeah. I er like acting. Uh, yeah, Erica mm -hmm. Sherwood played the lead. Oh, yeah? And uh, Oh, who's she? Is she from, goes to Toronto? She lives in Toronto? No, she's, she's Niagara from girl. Here? Yep. Oh, okay. But she was the lead in that, and A Kind of Wonderful Thing was another one of his movies. Okay. And uh, I was the hotel manager that fired her. Oh, no. And there was no script. so No script. Jason sent me this message online and said, hey, do you want to fire Erica? And I have a huge public crush on Erica. She's a, she's a little tomboyish, but she's like, oh, love her. And she's yeah. a great actress. Amazing. And so he says, you want to fight? And yeah, it's a, it's no secret that I publicly crush on her. Even they they used to be a couple. I don't think they are anymore. I could be could be wrong, but um, okay. it was no, it's like I was open about, like my crushes are open, mm -hmm. I, you know, whatever. And so he says, uh, he by Facebook or something, he says, you want to fire Erica's character in the in the movie? I'm like, dude, would you send this to like 40 people or something? He goes, no, dude. Like, I, I, you know, I figure you got the clothing for it. Like, mm -hmm. I need you to dress like the boss. And there so I have an IMDB credit. I have an IMDB page. For you know acting? I, yeah. Yeah, so do I. Because I'm in a movie. Yeah. Because I played the boss. The boss. That's cool. <laughs> and it's early on in the film when I fire her. Oh, yeah. And, and I go, oh, really? He goes, no, this is specifically for you. You want to do it? I'm going. Well, is this up my alley? He goes. Oh, totally. But do, he goes. Here, here's how up the alley, up your alley, it is. There's no script. Wing it. I'm like, Wing oh, it. I can do this. What's the name of the movie? It's called Fight. Fight. Yeah. And it's released. Yeah. Already. I don't know where you can see it, but there is a. If you, it's on Facebook, and it's oh. a solid movie. Not because I play a bit part, like a, a yeah. forgettable part. Uh, actually, it's not that forgettable because I fire the girl and it's early on in the movie. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm looking at myself. I'm going, oh, obviously I didn't have a haircut because he called me. I went that night. Wow. And, and, and we so you cleared, just went in and winged it. Yeah. And we it's cleared good. out um, the Holiday Inn, mm -hmm. the front desk. It was like at midnight or something like that. Cool. So we got them to kind of like just stand down. And then we went in for like, a, we had it for like a half an hour. Oh, and I just wow. come out of the office. I'm like, did you... Okay, that's it. But it was so cool because there was no script. And the whole serious? movie. What was? What did you say? Do it. You're fired. Go. Get. You're no, fired. Yeah, get out. Yeah. No, just go. Just get uh, out of here. Just one of these. But Watch. I'm looking at myself. I'm like, oh, look at how big yeah. my hair is. I wish I had to get a haircut, but uh, there was no time. Do you like watching yourself? On seeing yourself on a camera? I don't hate it. I used no? to. I could. It took me a long time to get used to my voice when I first yeah. heard it. But My I was young when that happened. And now, no, I'm okay. Like, yeah. I've gotten over the hate of it to the point where, like, I don't always, there's very little that I find funny about my shows when I watch them back. And I don't watch them all back. But sometimes if I feel I had a fire interview or I've done something and I've, 
you know, had a few drinks and I'm just and letting it rip fire. and I don't care what people think. I'm just like yeah. being outrageous. Sometimes I'll go back and crack, actually crack myself up, but no, so I'm over that. Yeah. But I just think there's a greater good for what I'm doing that, you know, there's a purpose and maybe it'll lead to something. I don't know. I'm freaking it's unemployed, good. dude. No, what you're doing is awesome. My job, I could go to work and make thousands of dollars, a, like tens of thousands of dollars just by cracking a deal. Mm -hmm. It got a lot harder. Right. You know, as my numbers went down and the, the deals started to get further and further away. So I wasn't doing all that much business, but that was like God throwing the phone book down the stairs and he, and it's like you moving. Okay. There's, I'm removing all your options now. You're out of real estate. Options are over. And I just decided that I wasn't going to renew my license, but I still, I still got a partner that I, I partner up with so that if anyone calls, I, I don't mind being a consultant. I don't mind sitting with people and giving them strategies. I just got a realtor with me that will do all the legal stuff. You know what I mean? So it's been a, it's been an interesting ride. It's this been COVID. an interesting year for everyone. Yeah. You just did. I take it day by day. I've been social distancing for five years, so that's no problem. Yeah, then I'm there you go. Hiding. I hate people. I yeah. don't hate people. But a, Everything is uh, changing. A crutch. 116 already. Is it? Holy mackerel. Yeah, I have that to get my by. kid. Yeah, baby. All right. Well, <laughs> I, to... I love you. Thank you for coming in. I love you too, Jim. How do we uh, How do we get a hold of you? What do you want to promote on the way out? You got an email? You got a... oh, Let's just flip over here. We'll go to your display here. Okay. Uh, this is the Viz Show on Facebook. Oh, that's a yeah. good shot of a down downward shot of your uh station yeah that was actually taken by uh daniel oh yeah uh from glass apple bonsai oh i wanted to talk about that he took uh you what? played dude yeah i love glass apple bonsai. yeah oh, we gone. opened Go for the niagara music awards last year i played the keys uh, yeah that was tremendous because did you see it yeah Sweet. and i've seen him before he played at the church i'm like yeah. Oh, who's this guy? And I went up to him and I yeah. said, dude, play my show. Like, come on the show. And he's like, oh, totally. I haven't followed up with him. How did you get connected with And do you play keys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. He asked me, okay, so he asked me to be his date and then he was opening. His keyboardist had a wedding to go to or something like that. So we... um he asked me to be a part of the opening act. And I said, sure. So we had like a week. We were supposed to get together, practice, which I do have a keyboard. I can play a little, um, but we didn't have time. So I totally, yeah, I totally, totally opened it. And I was just mimicking the sound. And it was so fun. It was basically like, yeah, I lied to everybody and pretended I was playing the keys. And it was hilarious. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but um, it was great. It was oh, hard, I though. Was... It was hard because everyone's like, Aaron, you are fucking amazing. And yeah. but some people are like, I'm not falling for this I don't shit. Think she's playing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I know. I can't lie for too long. I was like, whatever. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to help him out. And have fun. Like, I really... Oh, you had fun. Yeah, they're like, I didn't know you could I remember seeing you out front and... I uh, did the whole 90s look, like, kind of... I had, like, a vintage guest dress on and, yeah, wore the glasses and just, like, try to mimic this. It's so cheesy, man. So bad. It was awesome. Yeah. It kind of crashed. I, like, it's like I, think I crashed I was really, it. Oh, I was uh, Josh Mills. I was dating Josh Mills back then. You were dating Josh Mills? Yeah. Well, we only we only had a couple dates. Didn't last long. No. But that was one of them. Yeah. And that was actually a pretty good gig at that uh, Scotia Bank, right? Yeah, and I used to work there. Except to, uh, there social justice time. warrior. Uh, what is it? Taylor Swift wannabe. What's her name? From Welland. Um, Fucking she got up there and says, "This is for the women out there and oh, sexism and quit holding women oh down God. and you hate women." I'm like, people are awesome. What is your? Are you kidding me right now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. And uh, Buddy came over to me. She had a lot of drinks, probably. I don't know, but Buddy She's came over to drinking. me, and I was looking down on my phone. I was actually watching the the football game. Mm -hmm. He goes. Dude, he was asking me if he could buy me a drink. I'm like, absolutely, dude. He says, 
what kind of person comes to an award show and watches football on the on their phone? Like Jim. Me, I guess. This is Jim boring does. as shit. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. This is boring as shit. Yeah, okay, so here she is on fake book. That's the old Viz show. We'll look for something new. There's the Viz show. Q forty six. 80.ca. It's still up and running. They're still playing music. They're just not doing live shows anymore or what? I think so. I honestly, I haven't listened. I don't. Mm. Um, but yeah. Sundays, you used to do your show the I same time I was doing my show. Sunday's 12 to 2. Yeah. I think they're still playing music. Like, yep. hopefully I'll be back. But I mean, I don't know. Oh, this. Know. Is Ivy superimposed into this tub shot of you? I, I, I made that um, oh, I made yeah, that on I was Photoshop. Gonna say, the, I just noticing it for the first time. I love that shot of you with the towel on in the tub. Right? Yeah. The towel on your That's head. That's me. So wicked. But I was That's just Photoshop. looking, I'm like, oh, Ivy's Photoshopped in there. I know she's not standing beside that tub. That's a great shot, though. Thank you. All right, kiddo. Yeah. We'll get you out of here on time. Thanks again for coming in. Touch her up. Oh, here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should be showing it. I should have shown it here. Here's the shot we were talking about. Ivy getting photoshopped in. And I want... I've already put it out. I already talked to you about this. She'd be great to have on the show. You want her on the show? I oh, think she, so. She would be entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, she would love... She would be all over it. I camera. would have more, like, subject matter... Let's do it. ...with her than we just had. But it's 122, so I want to get you out of here on time so you can go pick up that little monster. Yeah, I got to get her from school. All right. There she is. Say goodbye, Erin. Thanks. Um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And thanks, Jim, for having me. You're welcome. Yes. Almost any time. Peace, love, take your mask off, and go hug your neighbor, you freaking weirdos. <laughs>